We welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us this morning. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship and opening prayer. Hymn number 231, Come Christian, join to sing. Sunday. So it does fall there. So this is not a, 
April Fool's Day, it is for real. So uh, Easter falls April the 1st on that Sunday uh, this year as well. Um, also, let me invite anybody uh, for Wednesday night Bible study. We have at 7 o'clock uh, this coming Wednesday. Um, I've got it firsthand on uh, the menu for this uh, coming Wednesday, as far as food, will be a baked chicken, mashed potatoes, and rice. I guess you bring me, I don't know. But anyhow, we have baked, we have uh, baked chicken, mashed potatoes, is that right? By Dolores and... Uh, yeah, it's for the, it's for the chicken and yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, so be aware of that. So that's what we have, plus other things we have, uh, as far as food on Wednesday night. So if you want to come... Uh, again, you can come early, about 6.15, 6.30, whatever time. Uh, usually I'll open up, uh, I try now to open up at 6 o'clock, and if you want to come early, that's fine. Uh, come come 6.15, 6.30, and you come and join us for Wednesday night Bible study as well as food before that. Uh, also, you have the financial report before you for January of 2018. If you don't have one, we'll put some in the back in the foyer. And you can have one of those. And if you have any questions on anything on the financial report for January 2018, um, you can you can either ask Renee or myself, and we'll give you answers to any questions you may have for the financial report for January 2018. Anything else? Anything else we need to be aware of? Anything else going on? If not. Just yeah, I'm number forty four for the beauty out here.
bulletins, there are a few prayers, requests, and concern. I ask you to remember and to pray for different people we do and are praying for on our prayer list on a daily and continual basis. Um, Megan will be getting a test result this coming Thursday. This coming Thursday, we get test results and see what's going on with her. So keep Megan in prayer and what she deals with is for you, which sometimes that happens. Prayer of Thanksgiving, uh, this past Tuesday on Mardi Gras Day, Joe Neeson uh, at that News General had an angiogram done and they put one stent in, he had one blockage. It was 80% blocked, so he did one stent. And by 12.30, he was heading back to his daughter's house, Jamie's house. So, but he's doing fine, doing good. Even after the surgery, did fine, no problems, no complication. So prayers of thanksgiving, Joe Neeson is doing okay. I ask you to remember the family, friends of all the victims of this shooting in the school in South Florida. Remember the many people that are hurting over this and what's going on with all of this. And I know it may be difficult. Pray for the young man who who did this terrible and horrible thing to where countless lives were taken away from families and friends. But pray for pray for this young man and for his soul and for what takes place in his life as well. Um, I know I know again I know it's hard to pray for someone who does such a terrible thing. But just pray for them and pray for the families and the other people as well that are hurting and what they're going through and what we'll be going through as well. Uh, so do remember them. <coughs> other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us this morning. <coughs> anyway. Hey, Daniel. Yeah. Good to have Daniel here with us. He's been having out with his knee. So how you doing, Daniel? I'm doing great. I'm great. Good. Keep better every day. Well, good. Continue praying for my family and all yeah. um, We'll do. We'll continue praying for your family, for your son, and the other family, and also for you for continual healing for your body. We sure will. Other prayer requests. Renee. Yes. Yes. That's true. Uh, yeah, they start back up school tomorrow. That's right. Yes. Yeah, after it's been off a week. <laughs> They got to beat those pick you and they went back to school on Thursday. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we want to remember that. And how's Pam? Any word? No. Okay. Uh, she hasn't seen a neurologist yet. Okay. okay. So just please keep praying for Pray for Pam and remember her with her back and her neck, which she'll will. Yes. Miss Virginia Hall. I have a proud thanks for being able to come back to the church today. Yes. Yes, we missed you, and we're glad that you're here, and we're praying for you, and and uh, you're looking good. I can in and out of my Yes, I know. I know. Yes. Yeah, because I was scared when you came. Yes. You scared me when you came. Linda, what's the deal with Danny? Did he get that taken thyroid, or what's happening with you? Yeah, we did, but we haven't heard anything. He okay. had a dentist appointment Wednesday, which he had canceled because that was the day we had to take him to the hospital. Okay, yes. So, okay. he's kind of on the back burner right now. He's okay. Saying, they, we got to find out what's going on there. They haven't called me. I thought they called me and set up an um, appointment or something. Okay, yes. So I guess I'm going to call them. Okay, but one member Danny in prayer with his as well. So he's doing good, though. Yeah, he looks good. He got a haircut and shaved. And, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> okay, so doing good. He worked on a lid last night. Okay, good. He good. Feel good. Okay, good, good. Other prayer requests. Ginger. Uh, just continue uh, prayers for my, each one of my sisters and my husband, myself, and my children. And sure. My kids. All right. Also, continue to remember my home and Dean Galvin. They're going through a lot right now. The sure. surgery came out beautiful. Right. But things are happening right now that's not good. Just pray for them. Okay. And uh, also continue to pray for my son. <coughs> Sure. What's going on with that thing? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Absolutely, yes. Um, others? Yes, ma'am, Miss Cynthia. Uh, first of all, Yeah, Victor had flu this, with this past week. Yeah, he's starting to get better. So okay. He still has a lot of that congestion. Congestion, yeah, in the chest, yes. Yes. 
All right, so remember him in prayer, as well as y'all, and hopefully nobody else will get it. So yes, so we'll remember. Yeah, we sure will. <coughs> They're saying it could go to May now. The flu. The <coughs> it's possible, yes. A lot of people say. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you know, just take precautionary measures, even more so now than before. Especially if you're out and about, you can sterilize your hands. If, whenever you can, wash your hands real good as far as after you come, go away from things. So there's certain things that you can do that you maybe don't normally would do, but do it even more often than normal, and that may help and prevent it as well. So be aware. Yes. So we should go. Debbie Garrett. Maggie would like y'all to remember her parents in prayer. They're going to be traveling to Chicago for a week. Oh, okay. So just remember Sadie and Nick. Okay, sure will. Chicago. Is it going to be cold up there in here? Yes, and I told her she better not get stuck up there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to text saying the airport's closed. <laughs> she's got to be back today. She's got to be back. So, no, no, you better get, your, get yourself yes. here, right? <laughs> don't make me come get you. Don't make me come get you. <laughs> So pray for us. This will be the first time we've ever kept the babies overnight for that length of time. Yes, absolutely. So. Yes, absolutely. We'll pray for y'all. And, and Johnny's got three more treatments left. Is that right? Three more days. Yes. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So pray for Johnny as he will be finishing up that, and then they'll, they'll figure out what they're going to do next. Is that correct? That's correct. So remember Johnny in prayer with his continued treatment. Also, continue remember Debbie's family in Kentucky, her mom, her sister, and also her cousin, the one that, not the family of the one that passed away from the flu. Uh, but just remember her family in, in Kentucky and all that they're dealing with as well. So pray for them. Other prayer requests. Mr. Billy Lynch's family, continue remember him in prayer. Ronnie. Uh, they both of them dealing still with cancer and cancer treatment. So remember both uh, Ronnie and Harvey in prayer, but also Miss Ruby and and, uh, and Helma Ruth. Uh, pray for them. Yeah, remember them in prayer and what they deal with. We still will. And also with Tommy as well. Tommy has some health issues, right? Yeah, he's doing good. He'll That's be good. Ninety-five in May. Wow, ninety-five. Is he the oldest? Yeah. Okay. All right. I was just curious of who was the oldest. <laughs> wow. And how old is Harvey? Harvey's younger than I am, so he's probably in his uh, early 80s. <laughs> you got that, right? Younger. Younger. He's my younger brother. Wow. You know, 80s and 40. Is that what it is? Okay. All right. Jeez. Oh, y'all were babies then. <laughs> but that's good, though. We want to remember your family in prayer as well as you. Pray, pray for them because it's a health issue. <coughs> Other prayer requests? Yeah, Debbie. I would like y'all to remember a young guy named Randy. He lives in New York. I'm friends with his sister here in Slidell. And um, he was diagnosed with cancer a few months back. And it has spread. He's only like 20-something years old. And um, she was flying up there yesterday to see him, but he can no longer afford treatment. And um, he lives in New York. He lived, yeah, that's where she's from. Okay. And uh, she's a good friend of ours. She works at Starbucks there on sure. North Shore. Okay. And um, she's taken this really hard. Sure. You know, I, they they don't have a really strong family support system. Oh wow. And uh, but she was flying up there yesterday <laughs> to see him, but they've stopped all treatment. He just can't afford it. And I don't know what, you know. Yes. I just can't imagine, though. I mean, we have excellent insurance sure. and the bills, things that we've been seeing. Sure. So I can't even imagine somebody that Doesn't. has to stop treatment right. because they have no money. Well, either no money or the insurance is okay. You reach your max and yeah. then well, now you're had, on your own. He doesn't have insurance. <coughs> no. so, okay. I mean, he's been trying and he's lost his apartment. Wow. So it just kind of like sure. speaks for people like that. Yes. Yeah, and he's, and he's one of many. I mean, his, his outcome, his prognosis isn't good. Right. But still, to not do anything, you know, it's going to happen sooner than later. So yes. she's taking it really hard. Okay. 
Remember both of them, Randy. His name is Randy. Randy Valu says his name. Okay. <coughs> we'll do. We'll do. Appreciate that. On the prayer request. Ms. Darlene, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Oh, good. And, and your daughter and granddaughter, how are they doing? They're doing wonderful. They're doing wonderful. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> I managed not to burn the house down cooking dinner last night, so that's good. Shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, don't give up yet. <laughs> hey, hey, Shell, don't let it cook, right? <laughs> Actually, Mom's the one who assigned me to cook last night, so. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it's good to have y'all, and good that you're doing good, Colleen. Anyone else? Just pray for the many, for those who are not here with us. We have a few that are out um, and dealing with different health issues as well, so pray for them. Uh, traveling mercies this week for all who travel back and forth to work or just in and around the city. Uh, pray for that. And as always, give thanks to the Lord for his many, many times that he has helped us, that he's seen to our needs, or and given us strength or guidance to help us through from day to day. Also, pray for the many people who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know, when things happen, it makes it even harder to adjust or to even deal with things in life when you don't have the Lord in your life. And so, at least with the Lord, it gives you strength, it gives you guidance and help in order for you to continue on and even to overcome. So pray for the many, many people who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and, and any who are without the Lord. As Al mentioned, pray for this church and for the ministry here for what we together do throughout uh, for others through Bayou Baptist Church as well. Let's go, Lord. Almighty God, as we come before you again this morning, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, the many that have been voiced and unspoken. We lift them all up before your throne, and we ask for help, for healing, for grace, for mercy. We pray, Lord, for those that are struggling and going through difficulties, whatever may be going on, things at work, at home, and even the battle we have within ourselves that we battle from day to day. We pray for your strength, for your guidance, for your help, for your power. We pray for the many who are dealing with cancer and the treatments or none. And we pray for this one, Randy, and his sister and the family. Be with him, Lord, and, and his sister and help them. And, we pray, Lord, if you will allow it to heal him, even though the doctors say there is no help or prognosis doesn't look good, we know that you can do all things, and we ask that you'll touch him and help him and heal him, Lord, if it's your will. Be with him and the family. Again, we lift up all the prayers that have been mentioned and have been voiced, and ask for your help in the lives of each and every one. Traveling mercies for the many that are traveling or will be traveling. For our young people today, and what they deal with from day to day. For episodes like what took place in southern Florida with the many people that were victims of the senseless killing in the school, we pray for the families and the friends of those who have lost a loved one there. But we also pray for the person who did it, that, Lord, you would touch his heart and help him, whatever he may be going through. And we pray for other situations throughout the land, not only in the U.S., but throughout, that are dealing with certain chaotic and difficult situations that have happened. And we pray for different ones. We thank you for the many answered prayer, for all that is doing better. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor. We pray for the lost, those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, friends, family members, co-workers, and even people we don't know or we maybe meet for just a few brief moments. We 
pray for salvation. And Lord, be with us. Be with us who are here. Help us from day to day. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Let us stand as our comes and lead us in our offertory hymn. <clears throat> Five hundred and fifteen there the land that is fairer than that. into the word of God, let me share a familiar song with you. We're just pay attention to the words and it's a familiar song, but one to where you just remember it from time to time and brings peace and harmony to the soul. <clears throat>
know the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, it is well with your soul because he died for you. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn, if you will, to Luke chapter 23, and in verses 26 through 43, looking at today, you will be with me in paradise. <clears throat> In verses 26 through 33, we read from Luke chapter 23, it says, As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed, including women who mourned and wailed for Jesus. But Jesus returned and said to the women, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, for you. Do not weep for yourselves or for, you, or for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore and the breast that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and on to the hills, cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen? when it is dry. As Jesus is being led to Golgotha or the place of the skull to be crucified. Easter, we're in the Easter season, and believe it or not, it's only six weeks away. You believe, you think, wow, that's a lot of the ways off. Before you know it, we'll be celebrating on Easter Sunday. But it's only like six, days, six weeks away. It's a day we have set aside to remember the greatest event in history, other than the creation of the world and everything in it. Easter is about the death, the burial, and especially the resurrection of Jesus Christ, dying for our sins. God so sent his Son into the world because he loved to die for us that we may have hope that we may have eternal life that comes through Jesus Christ. Now, you may say, well, I, I know all of this, but do you know how much of an impact it has on people? Uh, what Jesus Christ has done at Calvary. It gives us hope. It gives us the assurance to know that this is not all that there is in life. That there is much more that we can look forward to by knowing Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. The chief priests and the Pharisees, they were concerned about Jesus. He mentioned to them a few times, I will die, but in three days later, I will be raised again. They remembered his words. Unfortunately, we read where the disciples did not remember it, but they did, and they were concerned about that. Also, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, signifying that God says now, because of what Christ has done, we can enter into the very holy of holies and able to go before God without any mediator other than Jesus Christ. Also, saints in the grave arose and appeared to people throughout the city. The Roman God there at Jesus' cross Thus proclaimed, truly he was the Son of God. And then to me, the thief on the cross said, Will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? So let us look at what took place on that day and what happened to one thief and what took place that day, coming from Luke chapter 23 and verse 32 and following. First of all, notice in verse 32 to 39, the thief himself. Look at what takes place here on the cross. As they are leading Jesus to the cross, and they nail him to a cross, and they put him on there. It says two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. They came to the place called the skull, or Golgotha, and there they crucified Jesus along with two criminals, one on his right 
and the other on his left. Then Jesus spoke, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up Jesus' clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching. The rulers even sneered at him. And they said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, that is the Messiah, the Chosen One. The, sol the soldiers also came up, and they mocked him, made fun of him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, show us a miracle, save yourself. In other words, they wanted him to come down off the cross. The nails come out and just walk around. Would they have convinced him? Absolutely not. They would have found some other reason to get rid of him. But there was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself, and while you're at it, save us as well. Now all we know about the two thieves on the cross, and even the one thief that came to know Christ, is that these were men, or a man, who stole, and he did not, and we don't know exactly what he did, but we know he was a thief. We don't know his name, his age, his family history, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Did he hurt or kill someone when he stole, when he, when he robbed, or whatever he did? We do not know. Maybe, just maybe, this man was a picture of a person who had never been in the temple. Maybe they never went to church. We don't know. But I think he knew God. And he knew that there was a God. He was a sinner. And he was paying for his sins. Now, he pried upon innocent people and he lived the life of a robber or a bandit. He was someone you could not trust. I'm sure you met some of them even today in life or in your life. Again, he is a criminal, an unclean person, and he did get caught in the act of robbery or whatever it is that he stole, and now he's paying the price for that sin that he had done. At first, both criminals, they joined in and they mocked Jesus according to Matthew and Mark's gospel. It tells us both at first for mocking and hurling insults. At first, the two, while dying on a cross, were against Jesus. At the beginning, they did not see Jesus as the Savior or as someone who could help them while he himself was on the cross. You know, this tells us that sin will harden a man's heart, mind, and soul. Sin left unrepented will totally destroy the person, not just physically, but also spiritually as well. It will cause the person to say things that are not true and do things that should not be done. The criminal and the others, they needed Jesus in their lives. So little time was left for both of these men. And then you knew what happened. Both would die that evening and, see, and, and judgment would come. Here we have a sad picture of a person or people with unbelief even while death is at the door. You know, today, so many are like these two criminals, dying, and no evidence of God in their life. Even while dying on the cross, they mocked Jesus. They joined in to the people, the very people who put them there on the cross. They joined in and mocking Jesus. We see how low people can get, even when they are at death's door. Today, the same thing may happen in our lives. 
People know, maybe know, that we are Christians. We are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. They may make fun of you. They may mock you. They may say things. Just, just enough to say, you know, there goes that do-gooder, or there goes that Bible person, or there goes that person doing this. That, it, it, and it, it means is to ridicule you, you know, concerning it. They mock those who believe in Jesus and say things that are not true. And it happens today in our lives that people may, when they come to know that you are a believer or a Christian and you follow that belief and do not join in with the other people, they'll make fun of you. They'll do things to you because of the fact that you hold stand firm to your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and do not join in thinking it. And not that you have done anything wrong. But it's just that they feel as though you set yourself apart, which you do not. But yet, this is what they do. And it happens. And so these thieves here, knocking on death's door, they too join in with the others. They mock Jesus and the fact of what he's done. And then we see the second thing that took place, a miraculous thing has happened. You notice in verse 40 through 42, look at what takes place now. People are mocking Jesus, the Roman soldiers, the Jews, other people, and even they themselves. But then in verse 40 it says, but the other criminal, now I don't know which of the two. I don't know if it was the one on the left side or the one on the right side. It never tells us whether it was the one on the right side or the left side. But it says the other criminal who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and others. But the other criminal rebuked him. He rebuked the other criminal and said, wait a minute. Don't you fear God? He says, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Amazing, isn't it? Sometime, something, or sometime during the first three hours on the cross, one thief came to the realization and had a major transformation. He no longer ridiculed Jesus, but looked upon him now with different eyes with a different heart and a different mindset. He saw now Jesus, not as one like him, but one that he needed in his life. He saw him as his savior. He was convicted, notice, of his own sin. We did this. We are being punished for what we did. He admitted his own guilt, but more than that, if you notice, he said, told the other thief, don't you fear God at all? We're dying. Soon we'll have to fast stand before God. Don't you fear God? And he calls Jesus Lord, and not out of fear, but I feel out of faith. He looked at Jesus and saw not the end, but the beginning. The beginning of something new. I'm sure he had no idea what it was all about. But still, he looked into Jesus. And notice, he didn't ask Jesus to stop the punishment or to get him off the cross or to perform any miraculous signs. He didn't ask Jesus, Lord, will you baptize me before I die? He didn't even ask Jesus to do anything but one thing. What led this man to do such a major transformation, a major conversion that took place? Did he maybe know that he was about to face God and give an account of all that he had done in his life? You know, the, in two parts it tells us in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 
The word of God so proclaims and says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and each one may receive what is due him for things done while in the body, whether good or bad. And then also, it tells us in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, just as it is destined to die once and after that to face judgment. Was it the fear of God that he knew he was going to be facing that evening? Was it the words of Jesus when he was on the cross? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And many other words that Jesus so spoke on the cross. Was it the working of the Holy Spirit in his life, convicting him and revealing to him that the person in the middle was indeed the Savior? was indeed. Did he hear what all the people were saying to Jesus? What was taking place? I feel as though that this man was given a revealed revelation from God, just as Peter was given a revelation about Jesus. If you remember, one day Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they reply, well, you know, some say you're Elijah, and some say you're John the Baptist, who been reincarnated. Others say you're Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? And Peter gets up, and Peter says, I know who you are. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, you know what? Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by any man, but by my Father in heaven. And God reveals to us things in our lives, even the need for Jesus Christ in our hearts and our lives. This is done by the power of the Holy Spirit coming into our hearts and opening it up and revealing to us what is needed. And he even here, this thief on the cross, as he is dying on this cross, here, maybe, what takes place in his criminal life is the fact God reveals to him that this man in the middle, Jesus, is indeed the Savior, the Christ, <coughs> someone that he needs in his life. And even today, People in the churches and even outside the churches are in need of Jesus Christ. You know, just because people come to the church, that doesn't mean that they're saved unless they know Jesus Christ in their hearts and their lives. Unless they themselves have repented of sin and given their lives to Jesus. I know people today they don't want to hear those kind of things about repenting of sin and doing what is right. But this is what... Christ preached. This is what the disciples preach. This is what the New Testament preaches. That we need to be accountable for our sins and for what we do. And give it to the Lord. And ask Him to come into our hearts and our lives. To help us with our sin problem. Ours. Not someone else's. And notice, this thief didn't say it was somebody else's fault for the reason for him on this cross. He acknowledged I have sinned. I did these things. I am guilty of it. Nobody else is to blame, he said, but me. Nobody. As, as he told the other criminal, don't you fear God, we are under the same sentence. We are punished justly. We are getting what our deeds deserve. Now how did he know that this Jesus in the middle did no wrong? He's listening to the other people, but I really feel he's, God is speaking to this man. And this man said about Jesus, but this man has done nothing wrong. He's innocent. And what the thief didn't know is that Jesus was dying on the cross for his sins and for the sins of the world. And yet, again, he only asked God, he only asked him one thing, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Amazing, isn't it? You know, my wife showed me a, 
a, a thing yesterday on Facebook. I don't do Facebook, but she, she does. And uh, Johnny Garrett Jr. found a picture, and he put it on Bayou Baptist Church website. And it was the picture. It was amazing. I, I thought it was an awesome thing. It showed a picture of a sign that says one way, and behind the sign one way, you had the picture of a cross, a shadow of a cross. And it's awesome. And you know, and, 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 as, and, and he put on there, both are true. And that is so true. There is only one way to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. Make no mistake about it. You've heard too many different people, celebrities and other people will tell you, you know, there's many ways in which you can get to heaven. Don't believe it. There's only one way. And that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus even told his disciples before he left. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. That's it. Very simple. And that's by grace. Because he died on the cross for us. And both are true. Now look at what happens here as the thief here. So it relates to Jesus in verse 42. As he said to him, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And notice the thief's one request in verse 43. And what does Jesus say to this one request? Jesus answered him. I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Awesome. Jesus granted that one request of the thief. Why? Jesus guaranteed that that day, that evening, he would be with him in paradise. Why? The man didn't deserve it. He was guilty of sin. He was a robber. He was a thief. He couldn't earn anything. He couldn't do anything for it. He was on the cross dying. He wasn't baptized as far as we know. But yet, his salvation, his eternal life, was indeed personal and it was guaranteed and secured by the word of Christ. Why? Because the man did repent of his sin and he put his faith and his trust in the Christ, in the Messiah. As he so told the other thief, we did what we, we were getting what we deserve. This man has done nothing wrong. And then he turns to Jesus in faith and looks to him and says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Two things happened that day to the man that he knew. Because Jesus told him, today you will be with me in paradise. One, he knew he was going to die. Physically die. Two, he knew he'd be in paradise. Did he have any idea of what it meant? Absolutely not. But he knew by putting his faith in Jesus Christ. And notice, Jesus didn't tell the man he had to do certain requirements or certain things. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. And that evening, when death came to that man, he went into paradise. He was there with Jesus. The sinner only asked to be remembered. And yet, not only was he remembered, but he was with Jesus and all the other believers as well that day. All of his life. I don't know how old this man was. 26, 25, 18, 30, who knows. But all of his life he did all of these things that were so terrible. But yet, by putting his faith and trust in Christ, by repenting of his sin, he was forgiven of everything. And Jesus guarantees that today you will be with me in paradise. Can you imagine? He was walking the streets of gold with God. I believe beyond his wildest dreams, when he closed his eyes in death and he opened them again, he saw and he experienced that which he had never experienced in his entire life. A place, beautiful, a place with no sin, 
a place standing before God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Where will your journey take you when you die? What will take place? Jesus often spoke of heaven and of hell. It's real. This is not a makeup of somebody's imagination. Jesus spoke of it many times throughout the gospel. That heaven's a real place, and so is hell. And at the end of life's journey here on earth, a person either goes to heaven or they go to hell. Where will your journey take you at the end? With Jesus or without Jesus? And remember, there's only one way, and that's Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus said, come, let us walk together. Come, let us reason together. Let us eat from the tree of life. In, first, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, it says, Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. One day, again, our journey will end on this earth. Where will we lift our eyes when we close them to death and open them? Will we open them there in heaven with the Lord? Or will we be like the rich man when he died? And it says he opened his eyes and there he was in hell in torment, in pain and agony. Which will it be for you? For the words of Joshua, choose you this day where your end will be. Maybe God has put it upon your heart. Maybe you have never repented of your sin, or maybe you have never given your life to the Lord. And you may have been coming here to buy you Baptist Church for years and years and years, but you never gave your life to the Lord. And you can do that today. But you see, all we have is today. No one is guaranteed tomorrow. But there is a guarantee that Christ said, just as he told the thief, today you will be with me in paradise. But it gives us the same guarantee as well to all who put faith in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. And that comes by knowing him. But the question is, do you truly know him as your Lord and Savior? You can do that today. Let us think. Almighty God, as we come again before you, and Lord, if there's any here this morning that you have spoken to, or whose heart that you have opened like you did with Lydia, and whose revelation you have given not only to the thief on the cross, but to people like Paul and many others as well. I pray that they will not delay. I pray that they will not say some other day. But I pray today that they may come to know you and give their heart and their life to you today and give glory and honor to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to hymn number 281. As we sing, speak to my heart. God has spoken to your heart. Please, I beg you, do not delay. Do not let an hour or a minute go by. But give your heart and your life to me. It's utterly important to the eternal life of you. And to know Christ and have that assurance to know Jesus Christ. 281 as we sing all three stanzas. <clears throat>
before we close, before we, we leave today, I just need to find out one other thing. Um, if you notice on the financial report, we have, um, we usually give our money, uh, the money that we get the excess uh, from the sale of the calendars, we usually give it to the Pregnancy Crisis Center. And I wanted to find out if this is okay with everybody that we give the proceeds from the sale of calendar to them, or do we want to give it to someone else? So, I guess, so that's, that's what I'm asking. Is it okay to give it to the Pregnancy Crisis Center, or is there someplace else that we can give the proceeds from the sale of the calendar to? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I've spoken to Cindy several times, and she has said to me as far as several times, I believe that's the right place for it. Yes. Okay. And again, I just want to make sure with everybody, and uh, can I have a motion then that we uh, send the proceeds, and we want to give rather than two dollars and fifty cents, we're just going to go ahead and send a hundred dollars to the Pregnancy Crisis Center from, from the proceeds of the calendars. I make a motion we send right. it to the Pregnancy Center. All right. A sec second? All right. Third. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any questions on it? I just thought the only way I could think of doing it is for making it to where everybody knows what's going on. So we're forward with all of that. So I appreciate that. And that way, Renee, you can go ahead and send that off to the Pregnancy Crisis Center. Again, I pray that God has spoken to each and every one. Again, as I often say, if you need to speak, call me. We'll talk together. Or if you know somebody in need. Or whatever the case may be in the name of Jesus Christ, pray for them. Don't give it up this morning with everything. May God bless, and we invite you to come back next week or Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, or next week, 9 o'clock, for, uh, for, for Sunday school and 10.30 for worship service. May God bless and be with everyone. Al, lead us in the closing prayer, please. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you thanking you for all that you've done, thanking you for the strength that you give us to face each day. Father, we pray we continue to look to you at all times, in all cases. Cases of good, cases of bad. Things of need and things of plenty. And Father, we put you first and you let we let you direct our lives. I ask, Lord, that you be with us as we leave go our separate ways, watch over us, and bring us back to worship again. And our son's prayer. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at, at the church at 985 Two one four nine three four three, and feel free to call. For if you're out of town or if you don't live near here, seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today, so if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.